Good morning and peace be with you as we gather together to worship on uh, this Sunday. I know that this format of worship is still pretty new and maybe even a little bit uncomfortable for many of us as we uh, learn to adjust to a very unique and sometimes uh, perplexing and sometimes uh, just scary situation uh, with the spread of the COVID-19 virus. But by meeting virtually, we're able to kind of do our part of being able to help limit uh, how this virus can spread. Uh, so I want to start off our time of worship with just a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have continued to uh, lift up our hearts. Lord, that in the midst of so much danger and frustration, in the midst of so much confusion and chaos, Lord, that you have continued to protect and nurture the health and well-being of so much of our community and our friends and family. Lord, we know that there are many who are deeply and profoundly impacted, whose health is suffering because of this virus, whose health, whose health is suffering because hospitals are overloaded and aren't able to get basic medical care for for things unrelated to this virus. Lord, we know that there are people who are suffering because of how their job has been impacted or how their social circumstances have been impacted. And Lord, we just pray and lift up uh, their needs and their concerns to you, Father, because we know that you care for our circumstances. Lord, that even when we feel lost, when we feel discouraged, when we feel lonely, when we feel um, uncertain about the future, Lord, we know that all of the future is in your hand and that you care about the things that we're feeling. So Lord, as we come to worship you today, as you gather us in your Holy Spirit, uh, scattered about in our homes, but we are united together in one spirit. Lord, as we gather together in that spirit, I pray that you would uh, just knit us together with the bond of peace and Lord, that uh, you would help us to hand over to surrender the baggage, to surrender uh, the concerns, to surrender the fears and frustrations that we come to you with. And help us to lay those at your feet, knowing, Father, that you are compassionate, that you are strong, and that you care for the things that we are going through. And Lord, that you are taking care of the things that are important to us. Lord, that you are changing our hearts and filling us with your hope. Holy Spirit hope. Father, I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. As we continue our worship today, I want to uh, lead us in a song, uh, Singing of the Doxology. It's a uh, well-known kind of call to worship, and I'm still a little fuzzy about the copyright laws, but this song I'm confident is is acceptable. I've been choosing songs that are public domain, which means that their copyrights have expired. Um, uh, just so that we can be worshiping and gathering in a way that is also still honoring to uh, the laws of our nation and the and honestly to the people who write these songs they deserve credit and they deserve um, you know, compensation for the work that they do for the church and so I'm trying to uh, be mindful of how we, we give credit where credit is due but so I want to uh, lead us in the song the doxology <laughs> Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy that I want to make sure that you are aware of. You should have all heard from me by now by phone as I've been working my way through the uh, calling everyone in the church directory. And if you haven't heard from me, that means I don't have a valid contact number for you or I don't have an updated contact information for you. Uh, bottom line is I don't have a number for you. So I would encourage you to reach out to me to uh, get your phone number uh, to someone who can reach out to me. I don't want to give people's contact information out on a public uh, public broadcast, uh, something on the public web. Uh, but chances are you know someone who can get their, your n not name and information to me, or you can leave a, com uh, a comment here, or you can email me at rev 
Trenton. That's R-E-V, Trenton, like the capital of New Jersey, at gmail.com. Uh, you can email me with, with your contact information there, and um, I'll be in touch with you as, as soon as I can. On that note, I also want to let you know of a few other items. Uh, the first is that I'm going to be working this week to start sending out a short newsletter every two weeks. Uh, we usually send out our newsletter every two months, but during this time that we are separated and meeting in, in our homes uh, in small groups or individually, I want to be able to keep you all posted about what's going on. So that's going to be sent out every two weeks and it's be sent out by mail and by email email. So if you are not in a contact list from that, again, I want to get you in the loop. So uh, please reach out to me. Uh, my email address is revtrenton at gmail.com. And I want to get you plugged in with that so that you can be in the loop of what's going on. I've heard people asking about how they might continue to offer tithes and offerings during this time. And I would encourage you that the best way to do that at this point is to just mail in your tithes and offerings to the church. Uh, that's to for either Prospect United Methodist at 5923 Woodville Road, Mount Airy, Maryland, 21771, or to Marvin Chapel at 5101 Woodville Road, Mount Airy, Maryland, 21771. We're going to be continuing having services online only through the month of April. So the first time that we would be scheduled to meet barring any other circumstances coming up would be May 3rd. And that means that we'll include Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday the following week. I'm really disappointed as I'm sure that many of you are that we're not going to be able to have a special service for Easter as usual, but I've been having conversations with people about uh, ways that we can put together a very special Easter service program for our online gatherings. So um, be paying attention to, uh, as I reach out to everyone, about ways that you can be part of that so that we can have a special service that is meaningful and significant and uh, well, significant during a very unusual time. So while we're not going to host a group gathering as a church, I think it would be perfectly acceptable, healthy, and godly if you feel comfortable with it to welcome a small group into your home and celebrate privately. And last, the original plan for today was to have a short joint worship service followed by an informational meeting and question and answer session regarding updates of what is happening with our denomination and the potential for a future separation. That is still the plan, but I'm going to make, uh, instead of having uh, the having a short joint worship service and then the informational meeting, I'm going to be doing and the same thing virtually where I'm going to make a separate video to talk about those things. That way we can kind of keep uh, our time of worship and glorifying God separate from uh, just discussing the, discussing the minutia of our institutional organization, which is important. It's important that we understand what's going on. It's important that we uh, understand and are participating with how our institution is organized because that's how we organize ourselves as the body of Christ. Uh, but with, with also the understanding that that institution we build, however we build it, with whatever um, policies and things that we have in place is built from ash and dust and will one day return to the same. Um, that's not to say that it's not important, it is important, but uh, it's not what's most important. And so I wanna focus this time on what is most important, and that is honoring and celebrating uh, the Lord God of heaven. So I wanna do that by uh, leading us in a second song called My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. I'm sure many of you know it. Uh, it's by Edward Moat and William Bradbury. Uh, but I want to, uh, I want to lead us in this song. I thought it was very uh, fitting for the, just the circumstances that we find ourselves in. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground 
end is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. Oh, Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. His oath is covered in his blood to afford me in the whelming flood. All around my soul gives way, he then is all my broken stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all the ground is sinking sand. All the ground is sinking sand. And finally, I wanted to uh, have the bulk of our time of worship today to just be an extended time of prayer centered on uh, the Lord's Prayer. So I'm going to be using the phrases of the Lord's Prayer and then building off of those. And I just want you to be, um, to prepare your heart to just receive, um, receive an offering from God to open your heart up to his peace, to prepare and to hand over the things that are burdening you, to hand over your anxieties, to lift up your heart to the Lord, lift up your eyes to things that, uh, to heaven where Christ sits on high. Lift up your hearts and uh, lift up your cares and anxieties and place them at the feet of Christ, at the feet of Jesus our Lord who loves us, who died for us, and who cares for the circumstances and the situations that we go through. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Lord, how often we come to you with our needs and our wants and our hopes and our longings. But we do not uh, take the time to just bask in the light of your face. We don't take the time to wholeheartedly place aside our concerns, place aside the things that, that fill our lives and just glorify you for all that you are. Because God, you are good. Good, not just because you do good things for us, not just because uh, you give good things into our lives, but Lord, you are good because that's who you are. You give good things into our lives because you are good. Lord, you are holy because you are so far above the political squabbles that we find ourselves in. You are so high above and so far above the, uh, <laughs> the pandemic that we find ourselves in. Lord, as we worry and fear for, um, for what this means for us, Lord, viruses are also a part of the beautiful ecosystem that you've created. As I've studied the science behind it, I, I've learned that viruses, that, that the vast majority of viruses actually kill off the things that would otherwise destroy our own lives, that they actually exist to protect us and to, and to make a way for our lives to exist on this earth. But Lord, every once in a while things go, things get out of, out of whack uh, because we have an adversary who's at work. But Lord, viruses themselves are not the work of the devil. They're not the work of evil. They're not the work of your punishment or your, vindic or your uh, animosity toward us. And so, Lord, we, um, we just celebrate the work of your creation, the beautiful intricacy and delicacy in which our lives exist, where we are part of the earth formed from dust, and we are, we are also the crowning jewel of your creation filled with your breath. 
God, you are so good. Blessed and holy and honorable is your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, in this time we pray. We pray that we might be your hands and feet as we pray that thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Lord, I pray that you would transform our hearts, that you would give uh, insight and wisdom to our minds so that we can be uh, part of your kingdom, so that we can be part of establishing your kingdom on earth as it is done in heaven. Because so, so often, Lord, there are so many things in our lives, in our government, in our institutions that are not of your hand, that are of the hand of the adversary to distract us and um, distort our, uh, the things that we love, to distract us from pouring our whole hearts out to you, to loving you as we ought to with our whole heart, with our whole mind, with our whole strength, to loving our neighbors as ourselves, all of our neighbors in every way. So Father, I pray that you would help us to, um, to be transformed as the body of Christ, as a community of people who are set apart who are called out from the world, but also called out into the world, as we've discussed in these past weeks. Lord, help us to be the body of Christ. Help us to be the people of God, the people that you've called us to be. Lord, I pray that you would help us to be uh, the temple of the Holy Spirit, radiating outwardly with your light into the world, uh, taking the blessing that you have poured into our lives and blessing outwardly with uh, to all others with that. Father, as we pray that thy kingdom come and thy will be done. I also want to celebrate the good that is being done. I want to celebrate uh, the people who are um, reaching out to neighbors, who are calling uh, elderly folks who aren't as able to, to travel. I want to celebrate the businesses who are um, catering to people's needs and limiting um, limiting people from just stockpiling and hoarding things for themselves so that uh, there are resources to go around. I want to celebrate the businesses that are uh, trying to give equitably to their uh, their employer employees as uh, people are without work or as their work is limited. I want to celebrate uh, the corporations that are changing gears to manufacture respirators or other things to be able to help out the medical community. God, I want to celebrate not only the medical professionals who are on the front lines uh, protecting and caring for uh, the sick, but I also want to celebrate people like uh, delivery services, uh, UPS and FedEx and Uber Eats. I want to celebrate cashiers and uh, people who, are, who operate utility services. I want to celebrate people who are uh, collecting trash at this time, people who are uh, keeping internet speeds running. I want to celebrate uh, people who are um, who are driving trucks and uh, working at, at docks to be able to keep things moving. Who and those people are keeping all of us on our feet by bringing just the basic goods and necessities that we need. I want to celebrate farmers and um, uh, and just other. Uh, other people who are working to be able to bring uh, the things that all of us need and use every day uh, to our tables, to our homes, uh, so that we are able to uh, to work and live remotely and to celebrate uh, and praise and worship virtually. Uh, God, there are so many people who are making even, even the discomforts that we have living virtually like this. God, there are so many people hard at work to make this life possible. And I wanna celebrate uh, that the work that those people are doing. Lord, we also pray, give us this day our daily bread. And here we offer up our needs and our concerns. Lord, we pray for our friends and our families, our family members who are sick, who are hurting, who are losing their minds being stuck at home. Lord, we wanna lift up our own fears and anxieties and concerns. Let us lift them up to you, Lord. 
I want to just take a moment to allow uh, everyone who's joining in with this worship service to just uh, to offer your silent prayers to God. Your prayers requesting his aid, requesting his attention, requesting his, uh, his thoughtfulness, requesting his presence. Father, we ask for the sake of our friends, for the sake of, um, although in our churches, I don't know of anyone who is infected. I know that there are people within our United Methodist connection here in, in our conference who are. This is hitting close to home, whether we feel it or not. And Lord, we lift up uh, the need, their needs to you. Lord, uh, Lord, we lift up the needs of people who are having to work from home, who are having to make adjustments, uh, for parents who are trying to balance being uh, working from home and also educating their children from home, uh, receiving and organizing the materials from their teachers so that their kids can get the education they need and not be not lose out on time. Father, I ask for, uh, I lift up to you the the people who are just struggling with loneliness right now. And Lord, we pray, give us this day our daily bread. Because Lord, we ask for so much, we desire and long for so much. But Lord, I pray that you would help us to be content with this day. Help us to be content uh, with the things that we need for this day. So often we want to hoard up or, or stockpile things that we might need for the, for the next week, but Lord, help us to be content with what we have for today. Help us to uh, be at peace, knowing that sometimes we're stretched pretty thin. Sometimes we don't know what tomorrow will bring. But Lord, give us this day our daily bread. And Lord, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lord, there's often times that there are people who are, who seem to be being insensitive, who, uh, whether they cut you off in traffic or they're uh, taking, they're blocking the way at the grocery store or they're stockpiling uh, 500 rolls of toilet paper and other people aren't able to get any. Uh, Lord, I ask not just for their forgiveness, but Lord, I pray that we would be willing to forgive them. Lord, I pray that you would give us patience with the people uh, who are making policies and decisions that we disagree with. I pray that you would um, help, that you would give us patience, you would give us compassion with people who are in our way. Lord, that when it seems that other people have a lack of patience and understanding, Lord, I pray that you would just sur uh, surround us with your peace so that instead of venting and uh, expressing our frustration with those people who aren't being compassionate and considerate at a time when all of us are already on edge, I pray that you would help us to be filled with peace. Help us to forgive them as we ask for your forgiveness. Because, Lord, there are so many ways that we are ourselves sinful, self-indulgent, and desperately in need. And, Lord, I take this time. We take this time to, to offer what are the areas where we need your forgiveness. We confess our sins to you. And Lord, we pray that you would lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. But Lord, there are many ways that we are tempted into self-indulgence, that we are tempted into distraction. Instead, I pray that you would apply us to, to seek your face, to seek your understanding. Lord, in times when we would otherwise just watch a whole lot of TV or uh, play a game to uh, numb our minds or distract ourselves or uh, just do things that would be, um, I guess, to entertain ourselves or amuse ourselves. Lord, I pray that you would 
um, bring us to our knees. Lord, that you would uh, help us to seek your face, to seek your inspiration. Instead of doing things that would distract us or entertain us, Lord, I pray that you would lead us into uh, activities and disciplines that will fulfill us and edify us, that will strengthen us for, uh, that will strengthen us with hope, that will strengthen us with compassion, that will strengthen us with, um, that will strengthen us with, uh, with love, uh, to be able to reach out and extend a helping hand as we're able to. Lord, I pray that you would apply us to your work, even as we prayed earlier that your kingdom would be done and your uh, that your kingdom would come and your will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, apply us to your work. Uh, let us be be found making phone calls to people who are shut in, uh, writing letters to people who uh, who are lonely. I pray that you would that we would be found um, making surgical masks for people in need. And I pray that uh, Lord, that we would just be applying ourselves to uh, to looking at beyond ourselves to the needs of others, that we would be part of establishing your kingdom, Lord, that we would be celebrating uh, the good work that is being done by many people uh, instead of just being frustrated and discouraged in our own circumstances. And finally, we pray, Lord, for that thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Lord, we trust in your sovereignty that in the midst of so much uncertainty, Lord, we know that you hold the future in your hand. Lord, that you are bringing about good from the circumstances that we find ourselves in. Lord, in your hands is the ability to heal, to bring wellness and, and well-being to the sick, to remove uh, the spread of this virus, to establish peace, to establish normalcy. Lord, in your hands is the ability to lead us to repentance. To tighten the screws to us until we recognize the error of so many of our ways. The policies that we have in place that are uh, really for the benefit of... That are really for our own benefit rather than the, the good of all. That are for um, making profit rather than about um, establishing equity and opportunity for all. Lord, I pray, um, I pray because in, in your hands is the ability to nurture all life, even life forms like, uh, like this virus that are inconvenient to our lives because we are part of a delicate ecosystem. We are part of a delicate balance. We celebrate you because you give us life. You receive us when we die. Uh, Lord, you create all life and you nurture all life. Lord, we come to you with hope and assurance, not just because we know that you are good and you establish our health and that you are able to heal us and make us well, but Lord, we come to you knowing that you are good because even when we die, even when we face uh, loneliness, even when we face uh, uncertainty, we know that you hold our, our souls in your hand. That what makes us who we are is deeply and profoundly known so that even when all seems lost, we are built on the solid rock. We are established in the blood of Jesus Christ who loved us and gave himself for all of us. Because Lord, in your hands, is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I want to close with this quote that I read from uh, Martin Luther, who said, I shall ask God, I, th I should paraphrase, or I should uh, set this up by pointing out that uh, he, was, he did ministry at a time when there was a plague going across Europe. And so uh, he gave this advice that he said, I shall ask God mercifully to protect us. And then I shall fumigate, I shall help purify the air, I shall administer medicine and take it. I shall avoid places and persons where my presence is not needed in order not to become contaminated and thus perchance inflict and pollute others, and so cause their death as a result of my negligence. If God should wish to take me, he will surely find me 
and I have done what he has expected of me, and so I am not responsible for either my own death or the death of others. If my neighbor needs me, however, I shall not avoid place or person, but will go freely in the circumstances stated above. I pray that we would be found with that same fervor for ministry, that same acknowledgement of the reality of, of these circumstances, and the same attentiveness to uh, God's sovereignty and God's love and God's calling on us in the midst of all of this. I want to close finally with uh, one last song called Be Thou My Vision. And I'm sorry, I don't have the, uh, uh, the authors of this. Um, and in fact, uh, this is, I, I don't have the United Methodist hymnal version of this, so I, um, this might be a little bit different than what uh, the version that you're, most of you are used to listening to. Sorry if you can hear my dog uh, yawning in the background. Um, but it's Be Thou My Vision. Be Thou My Vision, O Lord of my heart, not be all else to me save that thou art, thou my best thought by day or by night, waking or sleeping, thy presence my forward, I guess move forward chronologically since many of you are not leaving the building that you're in right now, but as we move from this worship time and we go in the presence of God the Father and Jesus Christ his Son and in the power of the Holy Spirit, amen.